Denver. Oh, hi, I'm Richie with Fairfax County Wastewater Management. We're the ones responsible for cleaning the dirty water after you use it. And in this lab activity, we're gonna use this model to show you where your drinking water comes from and how we clean dirty water. You'll also learn what happens to storm water when it rains. And finally, you'll learn what you can do to protect our water resources from harmful pollutants. Now there are two natural sources where drinking water plants can draw from, surface water or groundwater. Surface water comes from lakes, streams, and rivers, and this water often contains dirt, leaves, and other organic matter that will need to be removed. Groundwater is found underground in between layers of soil, sand, and rock. And this water is free from pollutants due to the natural filtration process as it soaks through the ground. Groundwater can also be stored in aquifers deep within the earth as lakes or underground rivers. We'll use wells and pumps to pull that water back up to the surface. Now here in Fairfax County, we get our drinking water from surface waters, specifically the Potomac and Occoquan rivers. Let's look at what it takes to turn river water into drinking water. Now the water will flow through an intake pipe where screens will block out fish, rocks, sticks, and other debris. Next, we'll need to remove any small bits of organic matter that made it through those screens. To do this, we add a chemical called alum. It's a coagulant, and it's added to the water. And as the alum mixes in the water, it'll bond to any dirt particles and form tiny little clumps called flocculation. Now this flocculation will settle out to the bottom of the tank as sedimentation, making it much easier to remove. Coagulation, flocculation, and sedimentation, those are the three processes that help remove impurities from the water. The water will start to look clearer at this point, after the flock and the sedimentation is removed. And even though it looks cleaner, it's not ready to drink yet. Next, air is pumped into the water. This helps break down pollution, but it'll also help the water taste and smell better. In the filtration process, the water flows through layers of carbon that captures all those larger particles, and then it flows through layers of sand to remove any of the smaller particles, making sure that none of those particles end up in our clean drinking water. The final step in cleaning the water is disinfection. And for this process, chlorine is added to remove any germs that may still be present in the water. Now the water is clean and ready to be delivered to your homes and schools. Some towns may even have water towers to store their water, and then when it's needed, the water will be pumped to the homes or schools. But what happens to the water after you use it? Well, after you use the water for drinking, bathing, or flushing toilets, it travels through miles of pipes to a wastewater treatment plant where it'll go through a series of treatment processes just like drinking water. Except this water is a lot dirtier than the river water and it'll need a lot of cleaning to meet the strict requirements needed to release it back into the environment. Let's look at a wastewater treatment process to see how we clean used water. The first step to cleaning up that water is similar to a drinking water plant. The water flows through screens, but not to remove rocks, sticks, or fish, but to remove trash, wipes, and even toys. So we don't want to put any of these things down the toilet or the sink. Now after removing trash, the water flows to a primary treatment tank. And in this process, the water naturally forms small solids that clump together and fall to the bottom of the tank. This is called sludge. The lighter particles will then float to the top. We call this scum. The sludge and the scum are then removed. Fats, oils, and grease can clog your pipes and cause sewer backups and you can help do your part by keeping the water clean by properly disposing of these items in the trash, not down the drain. Next, the water will then flow to the secondary biological treatment. Here, air is pumped into the water to provide oxygen, which creates an ideal home for these little microorganisms, such as bacteria, that eat much of the organic matter. Just munch, 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 munch. And that helps clean the water you can help keep these microorganisms happy by not putting harmful chemicals down the drain. Then the water will flow to the next process called the secondary clarifier. Much like the drinking water process, a chemical called alum 
a coagulant, is added to the water to bond with the solids to help them settle to the bottom of the tank where they will be removed or recycled back to the front of the plant. Look how clean the water is at this stage. But we're not done yet. We still have a couple more treatment processes to go. In the advanced treatment, filtration, and disinfection stage, the water will flow through filters, just like the drinking water plant. Once the water goes through the filters, it'll then need to be disinfected to remove any germs that may still be in the water. In the final stage, the water will undergo ultraviolet disinfection. The water will flow through large tanks where UV lighting will deactivate any germs, leaving them unable to reproduce. Now the water is ready to be delivered back into the environment where the cycle of water starts all over again. You know, it's important to note though that not all wastewater goes to a wastewater treatment plant. Some homes have their own mini wastewater treatment plant underground in their yard called a septic tank where the water goes through a simple process before that water seeps back into the groundwater. Over here, we have a stormwater pond, and this is where all the water has collected after it rains. Now, stormwater does not get cleaned at a wastewater treatment plant. It runs directly into the waterways, so it's really important to not litter or throw your trash down any of the storm drains. Also, pick up after your pets and don't use salt on your driveways in the winter to melt ice because all that salt goes down the storm drains and into the creeks and then into the rivers. And our fish don't like swimming or breathing in salt. Water is a renewable resource, but we all have to do our part. And now that you know the many ways that we use and clean water, what are you going to do to help keep our waterways safe and clean? To find out more about Fairfax County's wastewater management program, go to fairfaxcounty.gov.